This is Dr. Amir Fatih from Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. Today I will be speaking on the topic of differentiation syndrome associated with enacidinib, a selective IDH2 inhibitor. Mutations involving the IDH genes occur in approximately 20 to 25 percent of patients with acute myeloid leukemia. Specifically, IDH2 mutations occur in about 10 to 15 percent of patients with AML. Enacidinib a first-in-class oral and selective small molecule inhibitor of mutant IDH2 proteins was demonstrated to promote myeloid differentiation of leukemic cells in preclinical models of AML. Treatment with the IDH2 inhibitor anacidinib can result in an entity called IDH inhibitor-associated differentiation syndrome, IDHDS. This syndrome is similar to and akin to the differentiation syndrome seen during treatment of acute promyelocytic leukemia with ultra-transretinoic acid or arsenic trioxide. An independent differentiation syndrome review committee, a DSRC, was formed to review potential cases of IDHDS occurring in a phase one dose escalation and expansion study of anacidinib in patients with advanced hematologic malignancies. Data for 109 patients, specifically those with relapsed or refractory disease receiving 100 milligram daily of, de- of anacidinib the largest patient subgroup in the study, were studied and reported. The DSRC identified signs and symptoms possibly characteristic of IDHDS, including fever, lung infiltrates, pleural or pericardial effusion, rapid weight gain, and azotemia. Ultimately, the DSRC found 13 cases to be consistent with the diagnosis of IDHDS, 11.9% of the 109 patients evaluated. Among these patients, the median time to IDHDS onset was 30 days. Manifestations that occurred in more than two patients included shortness of breath, unexplained fever, lung infiltrates, effusions, and kidney injury. Among these patients, IDHDS was effectively managed with systemic corticosteroids. 12 of 13 cases were successfully managed with systemic corticosteroids most commonly dexamethasone, was used for this purpose. Leukocytosis can accompany IDH differentiation syndrome. When leukocytosis occurs, hydroxyurea can be used for cytoreduction purposes. An acidinib treatment was ultimately interrupted for nine of these patients with a median interruption period of approximately seven days. However, discontinuation of treatment was not required. This slide provides data on response outcomes for those patients with or without IDHDS. The overall response rate for individuals who had IDHDS, including those who had complete remissions, partial responses, and morphologic leukemia-free states, was 46% for those patients with IDH differentiation syndrome and 37.5% without identified IDH differentiation syndrome. There was no significant difference in terms of overall response rate. However, it is important to note that this is a very small sample size, including 13 patients with IDHDS and 96 patients who were felt not to have IDH differentiation syndrome. Additional study is needed to determine whether those individuals who have developed IDH differentiation syndrome during the course of their treatment ultimately have different rates of response to treatment with anacidinib. On this slide is provided a characteristic case of IDH differentiation syndrome, several instances of differentiation syndrome, in fact, in a patient on anacidinib. This is a 72-year-old male with relapsed refractory AML, and in the extension phase of the study, he was refractory initially to 7 plus 3 standard induction chemotherapy, and thereafter went on to receive anacidinib at a dose of 100 milligrams daily. On the right, you see the peripheral blood and bone marrow differentials during the course of treatment. As you can see clearly, the patient had an increase in neutrophils by approximately the beginning of cycle two of treatment. In addition, the marrow compartment reveals increasing formation of mature granulocytes and a decrease in myeloblasts at around the same time with an achievement of complete remission by approximately 60 days following start of treatment. This individual had three separate episodes marked in the gray boxes of differentiation syndrome, manifesting as fevers and predominantly pulmonary manifestations. The CT imaging prior to and after initiation of steroids for IDH differentiation syndrome is provided as well. Each episode was effectively managed 
with dexamethasone, prompt initiation of dexamethasone, as well as initiation of hydrea during times of rising white blood cell count. This patient had multiple signs and symptoms that were characteristic of IDH differentiation syndrome, including unexplained fever, shortness of breath, hypoxia, lung infiltrates, pleural effusions and pericardial effusions, as well as weight gain and rash. In conclusion, the characteristic signs and symptoms of IDHDS are recognizable and treatable. The potential for this event should not deter use of enacidinib when it's deemed to be appropriate for patients with IDH2 mutant hematologic malignancies. Effective upfront approaches include systemic corticosteroids, such as with dexamethasone at 10 mg every 12 hours until clinical improvement, hydroxyurea in the setting of concurrent leukocytosis, close hemodynamic management and fluid management, as well as conventional and standard approaches to the treatment of patients with acute myeloid leukemia. Corticosteroids should be continued until there is clinical improvement and thereafter should be tapered off. An acidinib interruption can be considered if initial intervention is unsuccessful, but should not be the first-line approach to the management of IDHDS. On this slide are provided the recommendations of the DSRC regarding the management of IDHDS, conditions with signs and symptoms of IDHDS, and refractory to treatment for other potential or suspected cases or that worsen within the first 48 hours after treatment initiation should be managed as IDHDS. It is true that many patients with AML may present with hypoxia and fevers. These could be attributable to the leukemia or infectious complications. Once these are ruled out, or if there is rapid progression of symptoms that may be consistent with IDHDS, prompt initiation of dexamethasone and or hydria in the setting of leukocytosis is appropriate. Next slide provides you with the references. Thank you so much for the opportunity to discuss with you the topic of differentiation syndrome associated with IDH2 inhibitors and acidinib.